Hey everybody, I wanted to start off here with our first day of face book, face in his book. I wanted us to look at something I put out here actually on Facebook the other day. And none of the comments that I say, you know, none of the things that I address here are addressing any of the sweet people that uh, commented on that. Uh, but it is something that we've been ministering on here anyway. So I wanted to go that direction in it here at the beginning and see where we go with this. Does God make people sick and does God cause suffering in the world? Does God make people sick or allow people to be sick? And does he cause your suffering in order to teach you something, to discipline you? Or does God have only good things in store for your life? Pretty major question, man. Pretty, pretty major. Because here's the thing. If God is making me sick and making me suffer to try to teach me a lesson, then I shouldn't try to get healed. I should try to learn as much as I can while I'm sick. But the truth is, sickness in my, you know, I'm, I'm, everything I'm going to say is going to be based strictly off the Word of God. We're going to look at a few scriptures, hopefully today, and we're going to uh, maybe get one in, maybe two, hopefully. But take the Word of God, let the Word of God teach us, does God make people sick? This will be part one, hopefully. Well, this will be two, three, four, five parts. But here's what I want us to look at first, and it's one of our favorite scriptures, and it's in Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah 29, that's over in the Old Testament, for you guys that don't know and for you guys that don't want to turn to it, it's probably because you just got it memorized, but I want to read this to you, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to give you a hope and a future and not to harm you. God's plans do not include harm for his children. God's plans do not include harming his children. Putting our faith in his book, letting his word dictate what we believe. Because I believe we have to be able to understand God in this aspect. Because if we think that God is making us sick and we think that God is making us suffer, number one, we try to figure out either what did I do wrong? Is this a discipline coming to me? Is God disciplining me like this? God does not discipline people with sickness. God does not harm people. He says right here, God does not discipline people with disaster, with catastrophe. God is good. He is called Father God. And Father God disciplines. Yes, he disciplines, but he disciplines with his word. What is the ultimate goal to all correction and all discipline is to bring correction. And God is not going to correct you with cancer. He's going to correct you with his word. He's not going to correct you with storms and, and divorce and uh, uh, financial calamity and things like that. He's going to correct us with his word. He'll spank you now, but he'll spank you with his word and get you corrected because that's the ultimate goal. We don't spank Jake or Julia. We do spank them, but we don't spank them just to spank them and just to make them hurt so that they could learn. No, we spank them because we're trying to get them corrected in a certain area, and then we sit down and we talk about it, and that is what we do. See, and God, his whole way is not like our way. He don't spank us with hard times and trouble he spanks us and corrects us is a better way to think of God's discipline is his correction his correction is his word and our his word I promise you holds enough correction in it to correct all of us from now until he comes back he does not need to use the enemy's tool of cancer and sickness the enemy's tool of death death and destruction it's funny to me that the Bible says that the last enemy that will be put under the feet of God and defeated is death and destruction. Sin is the last enemy that will be defeated. It calls it an enemy of God. 
So it's not even this something that is his friend. And it's, you know, it's something that we even look at. And you look at Adam and Eve in the very beginning and the things that they had and the things that they didn't have. They had it going on. The only time that bad things came into this world was when man allowed the devil to influence him and gave over to his plan and allowed the bad things to come upon this earth that came here. The only time. Before that, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day. They fellowship with God. Relationship was tight. Had it going on. Things were great. The gold was theirs. Silver was theirs. All the land was theirs. Everything they needed was in the garden. Everything was provided. They had it great. Until an enemy came. And he's called the deceiver, the serpent, that old devil, the Bible calls him. And in Revelation it says he goes about deceiving the entire world. And I'm going to end right here in this last minute and say this. That if I were that deceiver, if I were that devil, I would cause you to believe when something bad came to you, and I did it. Say I did something to you. You know the little trick where somebody tap you on this side and you look over and, and you're trying to think somebody else did it, but I didn't do it. I didn't do it. See, and that's the devil. He does all the evil on this earth. He is the orchestrator of it. He brought it into the world with him. He brought evil with him. God doesn't have anything to do with it. He brought evil into the world. And then when he does something and maybe puts the cancer on somebody, maybe uh, brings the, the catastrophe to somebody's house, he will turn. He will use TV. He'll use TV preachers. He'll use, he'll use cousins, aunts, and uncles. He'll use people to say, well, you never know why the Lord would do that. You never know why God. God has a better plan than us. He's a lot smarter than we are. Man, ultimate deception now. If I were the devil, I would put something on you and take you out and bring heartache and destruction to you and then turn around and say, look what God did. Look at what the Lord did. I don't know why he did it, but he did it. Totally deceive all of mankind. If I were the devil, I'd be tricky like that. Well, he can't get over on us. We're going to break out his word. We're not even get, barely getting started with this. Does God... Do it? Does God bring it? Does God make it happen? My answer, I'm going to go ahead and tell you straight up, no way. No way, Jose, God did not do it. God gets blamed for it more than anything in the entire world, but God, he did not do it. Enemy is a deceiver. He is a trickster. He comes and he tries to get us off track, but God is good and good only. Be blessed. Talk to you tomorrow.